what we are going to discuss here is the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Paper 1 and how to work smart around what seems like a big course to us. How can we can take advantage of the fact that it's on Friday and the other paper, Paper 2, is not until Monday. First things first, you need to know exactly what's on Paper 1. And this can change slightly, but by and large, it's what we have here on the board. It's number systems, which is pretty much, you know, putting stuff on a number line. Algebra, complex numbers, strand four, absolute bankers for us. Sequences and series, where we only really have to know if something is linear and the formula around that, and if it's not, then it's just quadratic. Arithmetic, which is really going to be probably a currency question, then either a tax or a depreciation question, or, or a compound interest, same thing. Then we have differentiation of functions, which should probably, in terms of the leaving cert ordinary level content, be in the same chapter. And again, that's almost a repeat of some of the stuff we learn in algebra. Fantastic. So first things first, that's what I would do. I would then sit down, and I'm going to help you with this over coming videos, and realise what skills do we need for each of these different chapters. And you'll start to realise things really overlap. Uh, quadratic equations, simultaneous equations, linear equations, filling that sort of stuff out. The same ideas and the same skills appear again and again, even on the same paper, sometimes even within the same sections of papers. Over here, I talk about the paper. We don't actually know for a fact how many questions will be on it. Uh, we won't know until we open the paper in June. However, usually it's like nine, maybe 11. Let, let's, just, let's just deal with what we actually know. We know there's definitely two sections. So it's split in two. Section A, sort of known as the short questions or the official name concepts and skills, worth 150 marks. And Section B, also known as the longer questions, worth 150 marks, official name, context and applications. For me, what I tell my students is this is the one with mainly numbers, this is the one with stories that throw you. And all throughout the year, in my grinds and in my classes, I've peppered in the idea of having stories that could throw you but then pairing it back and just realizing it's the same math skills and concepts we've been dealing with all year and in any of these questions. Okay, a few more things. Timing is crucial. Timing is absolutely crucial. You will not know, it will not say how long you should give each question, but it will say the marks. We will not know the marking scheme breakdown within that question. Uh, that will change actually after the exam, maybe even a couple of times, depending on how people do. But we will know this question is where it's, let's say, 25 marks. And what I always say is, you could just half those marks and that's your time, but that leaves you with pretty much nothing at the end to go back over your paper. And you know, in the heat of an exam on an ordinary level maths paper, I am pretty sure we are not going to get everything we could do first time around. We need time at the end, something else could click, an idea could come back into our head. So we need time at the end. So what I say is we're going to say half the marks equals to the time plus two. So let's say, for example, a question is worth 25 marks. So I would half that and give it 12 and a half minutes minus two minutes. So that question is a 10 and a half minute question. And once I've finished that, no matter what, once that 10 and a half minutes is all up, I move on. Because you're looking for three marks there where you could get like another seven, 15 uh, on, on the next question, which will be easier for you to get. Okay, you've got to be really strict with this. There's no saying, okay, well, you know, I, I only did three of the last 10 minutes of the question so I can carry, absolutely not. Keep that time till the end and you can always go back. Cool, so that's our paper one. Uh, we'll break this down into a little bit more detail over the coming weeks, but essential ideas for going into it. Last thing I would say is, what question do we do first? You should not go into the exam and do questions one to nine or whatever is on it. You should have an idea going in, listen, I'm comfortable with, let's say, complex numbers, I'm going to hit that question first. And you start to build momentum, and you start to pick the questions off that way. That's the, that's the successful student. That's, that's the student that does the best and reaches their ultimate potential in an exam. That timing thing is so crucial, because I've seen in the past a student get 143 out of 150 marks, and pretty much zero in section B. Therefore, they're only marked out of 50%. And obviously they have a serious amount of talent in them to get 143, so don't shoot yourself in the foot on that one. 